Today is Saturday, June the 1st, 2013. My name is David Favor, and today I'm going to be talking about video workflows because my good buddy uh, Rob Burns was talking about um, all the uh, gnashing of teeth and travails he was going through getting short uh, two to four minute clips done for his uh, PR Reach video press releases. So I had uh, Rob send me a set of his assets that he uses to make uh, his videos and also uh, one of his raw video clips. And so I'm going to walk through end to end um, and I guess uh, we'll make a little outline here. So um, we're going to walk through how to uh, create um, uh, archival footage, in other words, what goes in your vault uh, that uh, never gets uh, touched, and um, intermediate um, formats that you can work with in video editors, and uh, we'll wrap up with, uh, let's see, uh, green screening, which he's doing, and that'll be new to me. So let's... Uh, I do most everything from the command line, so let's go over here and uh, God help you if you're on anything but a Mac to try to do this. Um, you could probably do most of this on uh, an Ubuntu machine, although the video editing software is pretty sparse there, so that's why I like the the Mac. It's kind of the best of both worlds. I get all the public domain software on my machine via Mac ports, which would be probably another video of how to install Mac ports and how to um, uh, uh, add essentials to Mac ports. Also, how to add uh, Xcode, which is the Apple compiler. What else? Uh, oh, uh, setting up um, Bash, which is the command line shell. Anyway, so um, I'm just going to make some notes about other videos to do as I go along. So here I've I've started a finder window and I've gone to applications and I'm going to go to utilities and it's going to rumble around in there. Must be something going on in background here that's uh, eating up uh, CPU cycles. So here's what we're looking for, the terminal. And what I would suggest is um, I use the terminal program most everything I do is from the command line the terminal program so I have uh, drug that to my dock here so it's also here in my dock uh, so I can just uh, click on it and start it up so let's uh, make this much bigger so it's easy to see what we're doing here um, and so in the terminal uh, you have to know a little bit about file, the file structure of your machine. So uh, if you do a uh, print working directory, that shows you where you are by default, which is your files for your particular user. Like I'm logged into this particular machine as David, so all my files are under users David. And I'm going to CD to the desktop, which is the same place as all these files are over here. And I'm going to CD to my uh, to-do directory over here, or my to-do folder, CD to-do. And then there's a PR reach, yeah, so PR reach assets. So if I say clear here, and LL is an alias I've got set up uh, that just gives me a long listing. So here are my assets that I'm starting with. So there's a couple of uh, simple things that are best done to start off with. Um, First off, uh, a really good rule of thumb is never, ever, ever put spaces in file names. So I'm going to say move PR and I'm going to hit the tab key and that's going to complete so I don't have to type all that. I'm going to say PR reach video assets dot zip. And you'll see that file name is, is uh, changed now. All right, and then the first thing we're going to do is uh, when you pull uh, footage off of a camcorder, it's going to be like in these files that are a number in capital MTS, which tells you exactly nothing. 
So, because Rob hasn't um, changed the name here of this footage, if he comes back 10 years from now looking for a piece of footage, he's going to be hard pressed to find it. So first off, we're going to introspect this footage, which just means we're going to take a peek at it and see what's in it. Again, I'm hitting the tab key to complete this, which is a function of the bash shell, the way I've got it set up. All right, so all I did was I said uh, FFmpeg, which is the, the um, if you've seen Lord of the Rings, one, ru one uh, ring to rule them all. This is one uh, uber duper, super duper um, video audio encoder to rule them all. So FFmpeg is the tool to rule them all. And let's see, I think that there's, let's see, is there a date in here? Yeah, I guess there's not a date by default in all video streams, so I don't know what the heck this is. So I guess the first thing we're going to do is go over here to PR Reach Assets, play this. Pagan accelerate bonus totaling more than three. Okay, so this is some sort of Eben Pagan. All right, and there's still no. Let's see if there's a. I don't think there's any kind of uh, inspector that's going to give me any other information here. Control panel. No, it's giving me the same information. I was hoping to find a date. Well, anyway, uh, by the way, uh, this uh, program Moviest, I probably should mention this also. If you search for uh, Moviest Mac, Moviest is a, um, all it is is a previewing utility like uh, most people would use um, uh, QuickTime to preview a video, except the problem is Here's what happens with QuickTime. If we take this MTS footage and drop it onto QuickTime, it won't even it won't even do anything. Uh, let's see. Uh, can I open? Yeah, open file. The problem with QuickTime is that it's just. Um, I hate to say old, but that I mean that's basically what it amounts to. Is if we go to to do here and we go in PR reach assets, you see this uh, footage is grayed out here. So that means we can't preview it in QuickTime. Um, so Moviest basically uses all the codecs. Codec stands for um, uh, it's short for um, code that uh, encodes or decodes audio and video streams and FFmpeg um, has, let's see, FFmpeg codex is that the right um, see this number here, I, I just ran the output of FFmpeg dash codex into WC and said count the lines and it told me that FFmpeg can uh, process 368 different types of audio and video streams. So Movius, the the program that we uh, use to preview videos here, simply accesses the same libraries that FFmpeg has. So what that means is that as um, FFmpeg continually adds support for new codecs, uh, Movius will just have access to those. And you know, another thing I should probably do is uh, check to ensure <coughs> Moviest uses uh, the latest FFmpeg libraries, of which there are many. So FFmpeg is also what uh, Views uses to uh, encode BitTorrents into different formats to play on different players. 
So, um, I mean, it's a, it's a tool used by almost every project that works with audio and video. All right, so um, we have no idea what this uh, video footage is. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, I'm going to look around online and see if I can find a date that Evan Pagan um, released this particular product and. I'll show you what we're going to use with that name here uh, in just a second as soon as I find it. All right, so I just went and went around and found uh, where Eben Pagan has his. Uh, this looks like the site where he announced Accelerate. So, um, and here's what I was looking for is the date right here. So, what we're going to do is to keep up with what the heck this footage is that we're working with, uh, we're going to rename this. I'm going to say move. Um, this is going to be 2013-04-23. And um, Evan Pagan. Uh, we'll just call it accelerate.mts. Now, so what this does is that it embeds the date of the um, the file, and actually, uh, what we ought to do is um, again. I'm hitting uh, we'll call this uh, we'll tag a PR on the end of it in case there's something else um, that um, <clears throat> some other project that Rob happens to be using with them. So this allows for several different searches. Um, you can go back and guess at uh, film projects by date. For example, here I'll um, so we can get rid of this. I'll give you an example. Like here's an archive disc that I've got here, and let's go to uh, 2013. You can see here that I've got everything is arranged by date. Uh, it looks like it's got a space in the name there. What? Hmm. Which also means that it'll have a space in this one over here. I'm just going to fix this right quick. Huh. Interesting. All right. So if you look here, you can see that um, here's all the projects I've done in 2013, at least that I've got archived here. And I typically archive these after I've got all the video published. And you'll notice I've got um, the date and then usually uh, who was doing what. Uh, like this is Bob Stevens' seven-figure client design. Uh, this one is uh, FFP MPEG uh, mobile transcoding. Uh, there's the recordings from a book design mastermind that I ran. There's the second one I ran. Um, so you get the idea. If you go back and look, um, I've got footage that goes back to, uh, I think, 2001 or two. And if I had to guess, you know, if I just had thousands of uh, project files that were all numbers and MTS, Lord knows what those would be. So the first thing is name your uh, assets to begin with. So now we've got an MTS file which is uh, completely useless. Uh, you can't use it in any kind of um, video editor and I'll show you why. If we look at what's inside, again FFmpeg is your friend here. If you look inside this video you'll see, we just uh, looked inside it, you'll see that this video is made up of uh, two streams. It's a there's a video stream and an audio stream. Now the video stream is H.264, which is acceptable for uh, any type of um, uh, video camera. AC3 not so much. Now let's just try a, a little something here, uh, kind of fun. Let's say FFmpeg, and we're going to say input. Uh, our MTS file and we're going to output it as an MOV file. I don't know if this will actually work or not, but we'll we'll find out. Oh, okay, so it actually did um, uh, it it's I'm going to stop this here. 
it's told us that it's going to go from H.264 to live X.264, which really is just a copy operation. It's the same video stream, so we don't really have to do anything. But it is going from AAC to uh, live FAAC. So in other words, it's going from AC3 to just pure AC, A, AC3 to AAC, which is a, a little bit different type of um, audio stream, which is uh, a valid audio stream for most editors to use. So what I'm going to do instead here is I'm going to remove this um, MOV file. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, FFmpeg and we're going to say is the input our MTS file and we're going to change the output to an MOV. But then what we're going to go over here and do is we're going to give it a couple options. We're going to say um, uh, to look and see because the options uh, just changed recently for this. Like I've already got a rewrap script written here. Wrap. I'm going to say I'm going to rewrap this uh, MTS file and what rewrap means is that I'm going to change the container format from MTS to something like MOV or MP4 which is understood by any tool on the planet. MTS. The only the only thing I know that'll work with raw MTS footage is Sony Vegas on Windows. Shutter, shutter. So if you're so foolish to run Windows, I guess if you had a really beefy machine, you could run Sony Sony Vegas on it and uh, use direct MTS footage. Rewrapping means that oh, I'll just explain what's happening here. So. Uh, it says for the video codec we're going to do a copy operation. See how fast that went? Um, and we're going to make sure that the audio and video is synced. And then for the audio codec we're going to change it to a, a AAC codec and we're just going to, these are some random uh, arguments to the uh, audio encoder. My guess is that we could probably just do this. Let's just, let's just see what happens if we do this. I could probably change my uh, encoding or my rewrapper a little bit. Whoops. To help if I could type here. So we're going to change this. Easier this way, just complete it and say MP4, and it's going to ask to override it. Okay, so it it probably does. Um, so probably, um, actually, let's just um, I'll show you what a rewrap script looks like. Scripting is your friend too. Oops, it's going to be in the bin directory. Rewrap. So this is just an example of a script, which most of this will be gobbledygook. But probably what we can do, I'm just going to change this one line here to actually, and there is a new syntax so I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up what that new syntax is right quick because this old syntax is probably going to be deprecated soon alright I wandered around the obscure documentation for FFmpeg and I changed my uh, rewrapper where it's just going to say for the use the, the new syntax which is dash G for codec so the video codec is just going to copy the video stream doing nothing with it and for the audio codec it's just going to ta use uh, the um, AAC codec and just change the um, um, rate from 4800 to 44100, which is a more standard rate that uh, more tools can use. So if I got my syntax right, make sure we're in the right place. Clear. I should be able to say rewrap. Um, oh, you know, one other thing we're going to do is change. No, actually, no. Uh, let's see, rewrap.
Oh, you know what I've done here? I've done a bad thing. Um, I'm going to repeat the vi command that I did to edit this file, and I'm going to do uh, b c to find this. Codec video, okay. Um, huh. Well, let's do an error checking there. Uh, there is an error, and the error is there's already a file that exists. So I'm going to add a uh, Y in there, which means that it's going to automatically overwrite files. Maybe it's just that freaking fast. Let's just do let's just take a look at this so that we can actually see the whole output of the command. Uh, all right, let's just take a look at the bitrate is okay, so yeah, see the the uh, bitrate for the audio is um, 2200 kilobyte per second so um, there's no earthly need for that type of um, uh, that high resolution so I'm going to go in here and add yet a I'm gonna make a little change here so I can better see what this command is doing And I'm going to change the um, go ahead and put the um, audio bit right in here. So instead of being 2000 K, it's going to be 256 K. So it'll be a much, much smaller file. And now we can see the output and you'll see here when we're rewrapping, it's copying the video stream, no change, and we're we're changing the audio stream from AC3 to AAC. Now, if we take a look at this, did you know how, notice how fast that went too? Like if you're doing conversions for MTS footage and something like Final Cut Pro, it's going to take about um, any place from oh. Um, uh, on average, usually it takes uh, for a, a, a high def camera like this footage off a high def camera at this bit rate, it's going to take probably 60 to 75 minutes per uh, gigabyte uh, to, to uh, do your conversion to some other format like MP4. And here we did a 334 megabyte. Let's see how long it takes to do that. So if we multiply whatever this time is by three, we'll see how long it is. So uh, uh, it took four seconds. So 12 seconds per gigabyte for doing a rewrap in, in uh, FFmpeg or 60 to 75 minutes per gigabyte in Final Cut Pro. So, you know, if you just got time to burn, you use Final Cut Pro or any other tool. Or if you're like me and you feel a need for speed, you use FFmpeg. Um, now if we take this uh, footage that we've got here, now you notice we've got an MP4 footage here. So if we take this MP4 footage and we drag it on to wherever QuickTime is. Welcome to another PRReach.com video news release in today's news. Evan Pagan... So the point is... Um, all I did with this video is say copy the video stream, which is what takes so long in those transcode steps in tools like FF uh, or Final Cut Pro or iMovie or any of those tools. And I just said copy it, so don't do anything, and just change the audio to meet the the uh, standards of all the tools. And you'll notice that it's almost the same size as the original footage. Uh, the only thing that's changed is the audio um, 
has become a bit more compressed. Now you can also go one step farther which makes it even easier to work with. Uh, let's see where our uh, if we go up here to our command, let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see the whole command here. So this was our command. So let's let's just for grins, let's do this. And let's change this. Let's change this to say uh, AC1. Is that it? Channels? Yeah. Well, I meant to rename the file so we could save the other file. It was 360. So I just changed it to be a mono file. Um, that AC1 says to use one channel of audio instead of two uh, because there's only one person speaking, but it didn't really make that much difference. It's a little smaller. Instead of 360 megabyte, now it's 359. Oh, 359.1. So it did make a fair bit of difference. Um, so, you know, for uh, rewrapping, if you know there's only one person's voice, um, you might be might desire to rewrap it into um, uh, a, a single mono channel. So now we've finished our uh, rewrap step. So now we have a, a footage, a piece of footage that we can work with in tools. So we'll stop this video, and this will be our first video here.